Hello Collectors, it's Steven bringing you a special double review. Up on the review table today is the Soul of Chogokin King Joe and Soul of Chogokin King Joe Black, a repaint and slight resculpt of King Joe. They're articulated, made with die cast parts, and can separate into their smaller spaceships. So that means these two are amazing figures, right? Well, let's take a look to see whether or not they're worth adding into your collection. If there's one thing Bondi nailed with these figures, it would be the looks. Simply outstanding with no issues whatsoever, maybe some nitpicking. As far as being a premium collectible, these look great. Add in the fact some parts are die cast, and these feel like they're great quality too. First, the head region on both of them. Clear plastic parts make them look like real robots, it's so cool. The small detailing between the eyes is fantastic, too. The chest, where the rainbow effect is stunning. Depending on how it catches the light, it's either powerful or dull. Unfortunately for King Joe Black, it does look a bit cloudier, but some may find it to look a bit neater. The arms look nice, with King Joe Black wielding the Pedanium Launcher. And as you can see, there are small paint apps here which are meticulously applied. Here's a look at the legs on both of them, which, depending on how you view things, is either really nice or kind of bland. And not much to say for the back, except for the fact that there are a lot of screw holes, which really does lend the idea that this is either a cool-looking small robot or a toy. Depending on how you look at things, they're both really awesome viewpoints. Now, though they look awesome, it does come with a price. Now, due to the fact that these figures can separate into other parts, the articulation is very limited, with King Joe Black having even slightly more limited articulation. Starting off with the normal King Joe here, we have a hinge at the shoulder, so this way it can move its arms in and out, like so. At the elbow, we have a ratcheting hinge, which is pretty cool. And as you saw there, it can swivel around a bit, actually a lot of it. So there's some expression there. Hands, wrists are on a swivel, since you can't pop them out. Fingers are on swivels and hinges, so this way you can sort of get King Joe to hold a fist. Moving on down, we have the legs, and you can fiddle with them, so this way you can get a bit more range of articulation, but essentially you have a swivel hinge combo here, so this way you can move King Joe's hips around a bit, and what I mean by finagle it is you can pull this back part up, but eh, doesn't look too right. Knees, hinge, which are ratchets, pretty cool. And ankles are ball joints, so that's pretty cool. Swivel them around like that, but I think there's a spring in there, so be careful. Now for King Joe Black, we have identical articulation with all the points of the body having the same range of movement. However, how it is slightly more limited is the Pedanium Launcher. It does have a swivel, and it does have a hinge. However, depending on how you pose the launcher, you may only get one click of the ratcheting hinge, unless you do something like that. So you have slightly more limited articulation. Now on to the main gimmick of King Joe and King Joe Black. They can separate into their individual spaceship forms, and they come with a nice display base. Now, in the transformation process, it can be a little bit tedious, and there are lots of small parts that are moving around, so you have to be careful when you're doing it. So, to help you along, I'll show you how to transform King Joe. Now, in order to achieve this transformation or separation ability, whatever you want to call it, there is a downside to the figure overall, and you may have noticed this when I was moving it around and handling it. King Joe is held together by magnets. And depending on how you handle King Joe, yep, see, uh, it can fall apart. So that's not fun. You can definitely tell that the chest and the legs are made to die cast from that noise. So go ahead and separate King Joe apart into the four different sections. That one's actually held on by a plastic peg, but you get the point. Now, first off, we get the head and limbs, and this is also referred to as the King Alpha. Now, how do you do this? Step one, you have these parts up here by his head, and you have antenna you have to worry about. So first, pull it out, 
flip this little hatch around, stick the antenna in all the way, and you can pop it back into place just fine and dandy. This little backpack fell off there. Do the same thing to the other side. Remember, make sure you stick it in all the way, because if not, these little ridges here will get caught and you may accidentally snap them. Push it back on and secure it. Now, King Joe features one extra step to the transformation process. You can pop out the hands at the wrist because they're held on by pegs. And to make it more show accurate, you get a set of closed hands, which you just pop into the wrist sockets like so. And there we go, all transformed. Next up, we have the torso or King Beta. And to transform this, it's pretty easy. We have some side hatches down here, which turn into panels, like that. We have some antenna here. All you do is you pull them up, you separate like that. And then you have these little parts here. You pull up and display like this. Now for King Gamma, the waist. This is easy, yet stubborn. All you have to do is pull out the antenna. But as you'll see, there's no locking mechanism for the antenna in and of itself. So you kind of just have to pull them out and push them to the side. And if you're a little fiddly with this, they may pop out and fall back down. Uh, more so on King Joe Black than King Joe. And last but not least, we have the legs or King Delta. This has the longest process. So you open up the thighs in the back on these hinges and you reveal some inner mechanisms here. You pull them out, push King Joe's leg up like this at the knee, spin around, lock them back into place, twist the foot, so this way the foot is out to the side. Oh, forgot, gotta make sure it's pushed in all the way. Close. Repeat for other side. Now you're almost done. You may know that this part has some antenna to it, and it's easy to pull those out. You have these little divots there which you just pull them out, spin them around, pop them into place. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, wow, that looks like a really iffy connection with small plastic parts held on by springs. And now you're done with the transformation, but if you are worried that you may break one of those pieces or the springs in both King Joe and King Joe Black, you get replacement parts. So go ahead, ham hand it if you want, you have a backup. Now before I go on explaining the rest of the goodies these two come with, I want to call attention to this little booklet that King Joe comes with. King Joe Black does come with something similar, but it's not as interesting. It's just strictly instructions on how to use King Joe Black. Now you see, the Soul of Chogokin King Joe was actually released as a 40th anniversary item for Ultra 7. So this little booklet that King Joe comes with is just a little, I guess you could say, throwback to Ultra 7, the series, and King Joe itself. So you can see here, I'm just taking some time to go over it. Some concept art and whatnot there, some behind the scenes stuff. A look at some of the older toys and vinyls and whatnot released to celebrate King Joe and Ultra 7. And then finally we get to instructions in which I pretty much cover everything in the review. So not much to worry about here. So now continuing on with the individual spaceships, you get this display stand. And it can be used in two different ways. One, you can display it so this way King Joe is separated. Or you can use this piece, turn it around and plug it into this hole so this way you can use it as a normal display base for King Joe all assembled. Now to go along with this display stand, we also get a little nameplate here which is in gold. You can see Anniversary Ultra 7 40th, Soul of Chogokin King Joe. And it plugs into the front of the display stand easily enough like this. Now, let's say you're not interested, whoops, yeah, that's something I'm gonna critique later. Um, let's say you're not interested in actually having all of these stands out and about, and for some reason you just wanna have the display base on its own. You can hide all of the different individual little stand parts 
underneath the base. You can see there are some clippings here, so this way you can plug them in nice and easy. Now to put King Joe on the display stand, what you would have to do is put the King Alpha right up here. King Beta goes right up here in front. King Gamma goes right next to it. Plugs in nice and securely. And then finally, King Delta goes right up on the back. Now something you may notice right away is not everything is a center and as you noticed before, King Gamma's antenna fell. Now, the issue with these stands is that they're not entirely secure and they don't necessarily line up correctly with the bottoms of each of the different spaceships. And they're not plugged into the base securely and they're very, very thin, brittle plastic parts and they're translucent. So you may just want to be careful there. Uh, it's not necessarily the best display stand in the world, but at least we get one. Now, in terms of the actual display stand parts, I sort of told a little fib. They're not exactly identical. This part here to support the King Alpha ship of King Joe Black is taller and is made of a smoky black plastic because, well, you've got the gun to worry about there. Now, last up, there is this neat little thing that both King Joes come with. See this here? There are buttons for a secret hatch. And hidden in this hatch would be the spaceship for the aliens which control King Joe. Ooh, ah. Most would say this is probably a pointless accessory. However, it's a nice little nod to the series as a whole. Now, just how big are these two? First up, alongside some of NECA's Pacific Rim figures, Next, some SH Monster Arts, some Ultra Act Ultras, and finally some Ultra Act Kaiju. So, as you can see here, these two are able to sneak in wonderfully in an Ultra Act display, and if you have some vinyls, I'm sure they could sneak in wonderfully in a display with them, too. So, buy them now, skip them, or hunt for a deal. They look great, and they're certainly hefty. Articulation-wise, Eh, not too many points, but the fact they can separate is awesome. Throw in a display base and have them in scale with vinyls and the Ultra Act line, and you have one hell of a display piece with both of them. I managed to get both of mine for about $140 ship back in January of 2015, but the prices have skyrocketed since then, going for about 10,000 yen a piece. Die-hard completionists and King Joe fans will want to get these, but for the average Joe... Maybe it's an easy skip. Regardless, these figures are pretty sweet. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't. If you'd like to view some of my other videos, go ahead and click on the pictures in this video and you'll be taken right to them. I've hand selected them just for you. Be sure to check the description for both more information and some links to help me out, including a link to my Patreon. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.